Coming to you from Annapolis, Maryland, home of the U.S. Naval Academy, the sailing capital of the world, home of the world's largest crab feast, and four signers of the Declaration of Independence. This is the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief, a daily roundup of local news that you can use, including local sports, local events, local opinion, and local weather from DMV Weather. Now here's your host, publisher of Eye on Annapolis, John Frenet. Well, that little bit of snow was fun, and now for the cold. Good morning. It is Friday, January 5th. This is John Frenet, and this is your Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. With all of the water that surrounds us in Anne Arundel County, Annapolis officials are urging people to be cautious around the waterways. It hasn't been cold enough to make sure that the ice is consistently thick, so there will be soft spots, there will be thin spots. Best advice, stay off of the ice. If you're a boater, follow a safe boating plan and avoid traveling alone. Always wear a life jacket and brightly colored clothing. If you do fall through the ice, remain calm. Don't remove your winter clothing because it will not drag you down, but it may provide you the extra warmth you may need for rescue. Additionally, turn toward the place where you fell because that's where the ice is typically thicker and strongest for a potential rescue. And if someone you are with or a pet falls through the ice, don't ever attempt to rescue them by entering the ice. Call 911 immediately, talk to the person, and help keep them calm. Look for a nearby flotation device, maybe an oar, a stick, something or other that they can grab onto, and wait for help. If a person does submerge, try to keep a visual contact with the person as best you can. Anne Arundel County Sheriff Ron Bateman is going out on tour. Well... He doesn't sing, but he did post on his Facebook yesterday, and I will quote this. It says, Come join me as I begin my open mic tour of Anne Arundel County. This will be a great time to meet your sheriff and ask me about any topic that comes to mind, be it crime, politics, the drug epidemic, my personal life, or even hunting and fishing. You name it. That's why I'm calling this my open mic tour. The first stop will be at Bella Napoli Restaurant in Pasadena at 350 Mountain Road on January 23rd from 7 to 9. There is no cost, no tickets, no RSVP. Just show up and the pizza's on the sheriff. Pretty cool. I'm getting hungry right now. Anne Arundel County Executive Steve Hsu announced that the county has filed legal action against opioid manufacturers, distributors, and local overprescribing doctors. Anne Arundel County is the first jurisdiction in Maryland to file such an action. Defendants in the action include manufacturers Purdue Pharma, Teva Pharmaceuticals, Johnson & Johnson, Insys Therapeutics, and Janssen Pharmaceuticals. Local physicians William Tham, Kofi Shaw-Taylor, Jackie Syme, and Lawrence Videber and their practices are also named as defendants in the action. It will be interesting to see where that one goes. Bad news for Crofton residents. The Kmart on Crane Highway will be closing at the end of April. Sears Holdings announced that they plan to shutter more than 100 Kmart and Sears stores in the new year. 64 Kmarts will be closed as well as 39 Sears stores. The stores will be closed by the end of April with liquidation sales beginning as early as next week. Another Kmart in Salisbury will also be closing as well. Tensions are running high at the Baltimore Sun. Sun publisher Triff Alizas said that they are in serious discussions to relocate the Sun's Calvert Street office to our existing printing plant located in Port Covington. The option would include a building renovation that will provide an innovative newsroom and a collaborative energetic workspace for our employees. A lot of the employees are up in arms about that because it does remove it from the heart of the city, of the city that they represent, Baltimore, far away from the courthouse, the police department, the mayor's office, almost into the suburbs. The Sun did sell their two buildings on Calvert Street to a Tapco Properties back in May, and their lease is up in June. Their existing printing operations on Cromwell Street was sold to Sagamore, which is Kevin Plank's development company, in 2014 for $46.5 million, and the Sun does have a long-term lease on that property. Yesterday, we talked about Severn Bank taking the plunge and doing business with marijuana businesses in Maryland, but a wrench was thrown into the works when Attorney General Jeff Sessions has rescinded an Obama-era policy that paved the way for legalized marijuana to flourish in states across the country. It's created new confusion about enforcement and use just three days after California legalized recreational use. Instead of the previous lenient federal enforcement policy, Session's new stance will instead let federal prosecutors where marijuana is legal decide how aggressively to enforce long-standing federal law 
prohibiting it. Seemingly about the only good thing coming out of President Trump's White House is that the Dow Jones Industrial Average closed above 25000 for the first time ever. So your 401k should look pretty good right about now. It's the first time in the index's 121-year history that it eclipsed 25000 It hit an intraday high of 25106 before retreating a little bit to close at 25071 Experts cite recovery in the global economy and optimism that the new tax cuts will spur growth in the U.S. That's about it for the news news, but the big news is really the weather, and we have George Young from DMV Weather coming up in just a little bit to give you all the scoop on what's left over of the storm, as well as what we may have to look forward to on Monday and this deep freeze that is breathing down our neck right now. And also, I've got a couple picks for stuff that you should do this weekend if you decide to go out. Stick around. We'll be right back. Did you know that more than 1,200 mental health patients had to be transferred last year by AAMC to facilities outside our area because these facilities do not exist right here in our own area? Denim and Diamonds is a fabulous, fun evening under the stars to support expanding mental health care in our community. AAMC Foundation proudly thanks RXNT for their generous $50,000 exclusive presenting sponsorship. Get more info at AAMC denimanddiamonds.org This is Maryland. The weather can be nearly unpredictable. We've got George Young from DMV Weather in Annapolis to sort it all out. Hey everyone, this is George from DMV Weather with your Annapolis forecast for Friday, January 5th. So the storm of Thursday the 4th has come and gone and it played out pretty much as expected. And while not a huge blockbuster by any stretch on the Annapolis and Anne Arundel County region, where anywhere from essentially 1 to 3 inches of snow fell, it was a major blizzard for the Maryland East Coast, affecting Salisbury and Ocean City and surrounding regions, and as well as many parts of the Atlantic coastline all the way up to New England. And it was an historic storm in terms of low central pressure and rapidly decreasing pressure readings and all of that good stuff, effectively making it the wintertime equivalent of a Category 3 hurricane. But okay, enough of that one as it left its mark here and is in the books for now. So now on to the next. More frigid air today through Sunday with highs today and tomorrow in the 15 to 20 degree range and then only in the 20s on Sunday with lows at night at 0 to 10 degrees with a few locations possibly getting to that magical 0 degree mark or even below. Then comes our next potential event which would be Monday morning and will likely be in the form of freezing rain and or sleet possibly also mixing with snow and rain before turning into regular rain in the afternoon hours. So stay tuned for more details on this one on later today and tonight. But start to think now in case a small ice storm or slippery mixed precip event breaks out around here Monday morning, affecting the morning commute as well as possible school schedule changes. More details all throughout the weekend will be provided on our website and app as well as possibly through additional updates released on the Ion Annapolis platform over the weekend if the situation warrants it. Okay, that's it for us today. Be sure to download our free weather app in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store on all of your devices by searching for DC MD VA Weather and follow us on our website at dmvweather.com or on Twitter or Facebook. This is George Young of DMV Weather with your Annapolis forecast. Make it a great, safe, warm weekend. But remember, whatever the weather outside, have fun and be safe. Hey there, this is John Fernay, and the Ion Annapolis Daily News Brief is sponsored by, well, it could be you. Podcasting is a growing trend, and since launching on September 1st, we have more than 10,000 downloads of this podcast, plus thousands of listens on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. In addition to our Facebook page, All Annapolis, and our Twitter account, we distribute the daily news brief to Apple Podcasts, which used to be called iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, and the TuneIn app that can be played on your Amazon Echo or Google Home device. We focus on local news, local weather, local events, and local sports, including high school and college. So our audience is pretty tightly targeted to the greater Annapolis area. And if you own or manage a local business, you're likely customer. Intrigued? Well, here's something to think about. Your company could be featured on this daily podcast for less than $20 a day. Interested? Shoot me an email and let's talk. My email address is john at ionanapolis.net, and that's E-Y-E-O-N 
A-N-N-A-P-O-L-I-S, but you already knew that, dot net. Let's get together and see what we can make happen. Need to make plans for the weekend? We got you covered. Here are our top picks. Be sure to visit ionanapolis.net to sign up for the events newsletter with a listing of all the upcoming area events. You might think that it's too damn cold to do anything this weekend, and if you thought that, you would be so wrong. Granted, there's not a whole lot to do because we've got football playoffs that are starting, but there are some pretty cool things going on, so let's get right into it. Tomorrow over at Anne Arundel County Community College at the Cade Center for Performing Arts, there is a discussion from the Peer Learning Partnership. Are we closer to the dream? It'll be a dialogue on race, which can't be any more timely than it is now. It is free to attend from 9.30 a.m. till 12.30 p.m. Local community activist Carl Snowden will be a panelist on there. It will be moderated by William Rowell, and it's a discussion that we really need to have. Uh, I do encourage everybody to see if they can get over to AACC on Saturday morning and check it out. If you're not over in Arnold, head on over to D.C. on Saturday as well. From 11.30 to 3.30, they've got a scavenger hunt of the Smithsonian's. And this is really kind of a cool thing. This is from TTD, which is Things to Do, D.C., And it's a group of people, for 20 bucks you get together and they've got a scavenger hunt through all the Smithsonian museums arranged. You go in, there's clues, there's maybe something taped to a water fountain, there may be specific ways that you need to go and specific orders for rooms to get to the next point. You can collect prizes along the way. You've got check-in points and everything else. It's really a lot of fun. It's good for a weekend where you just need to get out of the house. And with this one, it allows you to warm up in between your runs between the museums. There is no reservation needed, but you can show up at Ollie's Trolley Restaurant at 425 12th Street Northwest with $20 in hand at 11.30 a.m., and they will divide you up into teams and get you on your way. Sunday night at the United Universalist Church on Dubois Road in Annapolis. And it might be Dubois Road. I don't know what it is. But it's the Universalist Church there, sort of behind the St. Mary's football field. Classical pianist Brian Gans will be playing Chopin from 3 to 5 p.m. It's $20 to get in, and he is just an incredibly talented musician, and we are very fortunate that he does come to Annapolis frequently. So if you are into classical piano or any kind of piano, Brian Gans at the Universalist United Universalist Church right there on Dubois Road in Annapolis. Happening all January, something that I'm not going to go to personally, but at Alamode Intimates, it is Bad Bra Month. If you've got a bad bra just worn out and whatnot, you can bring it in and get a $5 coupon for your next bra that you purchase there, and they will recycle that bra. They will somehow tear it all apart and make sure the cloth and the rubber and everything else that goes into it is recycled. Very environmentally friendly. And if you have a bra that's in good shape that's just not you, maybe it's uncomfortable or whatnot, Same deal. Bring it in. They'll take it. They'll give you $5, and they will have that distributed to different nonprofits for women that really could use something like that. It has to be in good shape, obviously, of course. And that goes on all month. Alamode Intimates over there at the Annapolis Town Center. Those are my tips for the weekend. If those aren't yours, make your own fun. Watch some football. Be safe. Stay warm. And we will see you on Monday. Thanks for listening to the Ion Annapolis Daily News Brief. If you like what you heard, make sure to tell your friends and colleagues about it. And also tell them about our website, ionanapolis.net, where you can find much more. Be sure to check out our other weekly podcast, The Maryland Crabs. This podcast comes to you every Monday through Friday at noon. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.